Hey guys, so we're gonna dig into this wicked box here from GeForce Off-Road, and in here we've got two GeForce Off-Road full suspension racing seats. And in this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of how you can install these seats in your Polaris Razor side-by-side. -side. It's a pretty straightforward and easy process, so you shouldn't have any issues following along. Hope you enjoy the video, and if you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them down below. And don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. guys, I got a really sweet part here today that I'm going to be unpacking and showing you guys. It's something I've wanted for a really, really long time. I've put it off because there's been more, I don't know if important things is the right word, but there's been other upgrades and stuff that have come up that maybe I've needed a little bit more or I've just managed to deal with these for a while. I wanted a set of performance seats in my previous Razor. I wanted a set of performance seats in this Razor. Mind you, the seats in the Razor 900 XP suck. The seats in the Razor 1000s are quite a bit better. But I finally got myself a set of real off-road suspension seats for the Razor by GeForce Off-Road. GeForce is a racing product company that's been around for a long time. They're one of the leaders in the industry and they make a lot of awesome products at really affordable prices. Um, so I've used a lot of GeForce products in the past on stuff like my track car there and I've always had good results with them. They're definitely a brand that a lot of people can afford but they, they, they have different various kind of levels. That means that if you're just a weekend warrior you can get something that doesn't break the bank but still functions well for what you need it to do. So I'm guessing these seats are going to be along the same lines. GeForce Offroad is a sister company of GeForce Racing. And um, basically, they've, uh, they've branched off and they've developed a new division that's going to look after the off-road end of things. Some of their print products will most likely transfer over, harnesses, stuff like that, but I'm sure they're going to adapt them to work better in the off-road scenarios that we're used to driving in with our side-by-sides and stuff like that. So enough about that, let's dig in here and let's see what these G-Force suspensions, these G-Force off-road suspension seats look like. So full disclaimer, GeForce Off-Road contacted me a while ago. We've been talking back and forth. They told me about how they want to get the brand off the ground and stuff like that. So they offered to send me a set of these seats. They like the videos. They like the fact that we hit the grassroots, that we trail ride, that we take these machines all over the place. And they'd love to get some feedback on how we feel these seats perform uh, comfort wise, as well as um, durability wise. So we're going to be testing them all season for GeForce Off-Road. Um, and with that being said, they did send us these seats uh, free of charge, so um, I did not pay for these. Um, but I will be providing them with marketing content, pictures, video, uh, install feedback, stuff like that. So I mean, nothing's free, it's an exchange of services. But with that being said, you guys know you can expect a honest uh, review from me. You know I, I deal with quite a few companies. I'm not going to preach something's good if it's not. I'm not going to tell you to buy something if I don't like it. I'm going to give it to you straight, so uh, I had a feeling that these are going to be awesome. Oh yeah! Look at that, a hat! I love hats. Oh yeah! Oh! Ha! Sweet guys, we got a shirt. They got some nice swag at GeForce Off-Road actually. I was really impressed with the uh, swag they got. Really nice quality shirt. Those look awesome. Oh yeah, those feel great. Ha, that's what I 
I've been after, guys. I got a set of Momo Drift buckets in my other car. I love deep bucket seats. Uh, these are great. Now, mind you, if you're, you're 350 or 300 plus, um, any racing seat, any bucket, deep bucket seat you're gonna get, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna test fit it um, because I'm pretty thin and uh, I got a bit of room here still, but, but if you're a big boy or uh, if you're a big bone girl, then um, it might not be the right fit for you. So just keep that in mind. Heck yeah. So here we've got the seats out. The, um, the seats come with brackets set up for the razor. So uh, when you order them, they ask you what brackets uh, or what machine it's going into so they can set you up with the proper hardware. Um, so far the fit and finish, I, I think it's pretty good on the seats. They look pretty good. Um, they are coated with a marine grade vinyl. They're covered with marine grade vinyl. So uh, you should be able to pressure wash them no problem and uh, they shouldn't stain too easily or anything like that. You should be able to get them wet and uh, this stuff should hold up quite well. Uh, it's probably the same stuff you'd see them use on a boat or something like that. The base is Velcro in. It's all nicely zipped up here actually. High density foam in there. They've got a slit here for um, your fifth point if you choose to run a five point harness with the crotch strap. It's actually sealed up pretty nice here, and um, I'd have to assume that they're using a closed cell foam, so that will not absorb water. So it's in there really nice with the Velcro. Let's take a closer look at these bad boys. back here they've got a hole that port will let out sand it'll let out water and mud and stuff like that if you need a puddle you're not going to be sitting in a puddle um, so they thought of that um, and since the cushion is elevated up all the liquid all the water all the sand will drain out and towards the back as you're sitting there and hopefully all drain out the back there nicely you can see that better here they look nicely covered with the marine grade vinyl here. Zipper is holding everything together. So you'll see here, this is the suspension part of what makes this suspension seat. So we've got a nice metal frame. Here we've got our slaughter holes, which I'm assuming our seat brackets will bolt up to. And uh, that way you can get them nicely adjusted. And um, you'll see here that this weaving is what gives the suspension seat the suspension characteristic. Um, as your weight shifts up and down, this absorbs it. It goes down a bit, it flexes, so your lower back isn't taking all the impact of a heavy whoop or a bottom out. The seat bottom gives with the cushion and absorbs some of that energy, giving you a more comfortable ride and less strain on your back and your muscles. See, here we see the foam. Lots of foam everywhere. Looks like a high quality, um, nice high quality like vinyl here. The eyelets everywhere. Yeah, looks good. Can't wait to get these in. It's, it's gonna be a pretty easy install, I'm assuming. Cool name too, G-Force Off-Road. Hope you're getting a lot of G's. Hopefully these seats help you stay comfy. These seats come in various colors, black with different accent colors. Obviously I went with the red because the red stitching and the red vinyl accents 
go really well with my current color scheme. But I believe they also come in black and blue and I'm thinking they might come in green and all sorts of colors. And they're sold as pair. Here we got the back, just plain black. You won't see most of this in most side by sides anyway. Alright, now that we've taken a basic look at these seats, I'm going to move them out of the way and we can see what else we got in this other box. I'm, a, I'm assuming it's the seat brackets. So here in this box, it's labeled Mount Kit Front Pair Polaris. So uh, front seat mounts for the Polaris chassis. Quality innovation value, G-Force off-road harness. G-Force Racing here. Yeah, we got two inch harnesses, four points here with an automotive style buckle. Let's see what we got here for these seat brackets. Looks like we got some instructions, hardware, and the bracketry. Yep, looks pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So there's some pretty detailed instructions with the installation. Remember, the seat is definitely a safety device in your vehicle. The seat is part of the roll cage, the rollover protection system, and it's also part of the seat belts and the restraints, the harnesses. All of these things work together. Um, if you install any of them incorrectly, well, let's not go there. So we've got the brackets here. There's four of each. Let's open one up and see what we're dealing with. Just some metal stamp brackets here with slotted holes in them. And these ones look like some square two with inserted uh, thread certs. Two hardware packs and our instructions. So it's telling us to remove the stock seats. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the stock seats out and put them over here. So now I've got the stock driver's side seat positioned out of the vehicle and I have flipped it upside down and we're going to remove the four Torx bolts to get the seat base off. So the stock Torx bolts here, the four bolts. Now in order to pull that off, you have to pull the adjustment lever on the seat to release the pin here and you can lift it off and then you'll expose the bottom plate. Set this aside with the fastener. And there's four more Torx bolts holding the main bracket onto the bottom here, onto the bottom of the seat face. We're gonna remove the four bolts so that we can get the slider out. And that's all we're gonna use from this stock seat. We don't need any of the hardware after this point. Uh, we won't need these bolts, we just need to remove them to get the slider mechanism off. Since often these sit wet and they get exposed to a lot of elements, I like cracking these with the hand ratchet first before I hit them with an impact. Just to make sure we don't strip anything. You never know with the torques, they like to strip sometimes. If any of you guys have worked on Jeeps in the past, you know that nightmare. Now we'll pull these out. slider mechanism has come off the bottom of the seat base. I suggest you bolt all this back together loosely so that you don't lose the hardware because you never know if you're going to want to sell these stock seats or put them back in before you sell your vehicle or who knows what. With the seat on the ground, I'm going to grab my hardware pack. I'm going to grab four one-inch carriage bolts out of there. 
with the rounded end, the head facing towards the seat bottom, we're going to insert one at each corner. I'm going to elevate the head of the seat a little more so those bolts stay in there nicer. Now we're going to take two brackets. The longer two inch section is going to go towards the front of the seat because you want your butt to slide back in the seat. You don't want to slide forward and slide out of the seat. Now we'll take a washer and a nylock nut and we'll just start these. We'll do the same on this side. So now with these guys snugged up, we're going to test fit our slider plate. And before we tighten up those bottom bolts, I find the easiest way is we'll put some bolts through here. We need to take these guys. So we'll take our slider plate, we'll position it. We'll take our slider tube, the hole that's closer to the edge of the slider tube here. That goes towards the front of the seat. We'll take some more carriage bolts here. We'll put them through the bottom. Position our slider board. Take another carriage bolt through the bottom there. Okay, now that we've got one side there. So with the slider board position here, we'll grab our slider tubes like that. And we'll start our nylock nuts on there. Now that these are hand tightened and just snugged up a little bit, we can go ahead and we can tighten down those guys. Okay, those guys are tightened up. Now we can tighten these up. So before we tighten these up too much, we want to make sure that we're all the way back. Okay, the slider tubes are positioned all the way back now towards the back of the seat, these tubes. Now we can go ahead and snug them up. Okay. Now the last step is reinstalling our plastics base plate in the same position that we had originally removed it. So we're going to take our spacers like they came off and we'll start those. Now we'll snug up those torques. There you have it. That's one seat done. Now we're gonna repeat the same process for the other seat. Pretty straightforward. I'm just time-lapsing it here for you guys. Same process as the previous seat. Basically remove the base and the slider from the old seat. And then we're gonna mount the installation brackets on the new seat. Remount the slider. Put all the hardware on. Start off by hand tightening everything, wiggling it into place nicely, making sure everything lines up. It's a little bit finicky here and there. It's slotted holes because there is a little bit of variance in everything. And um, once everything seems lined up and it's moving freely, you can go ahead, tighten everything up, and then basically you'll be ready to slap these seats into your machine using the stock mounting locations. They come in and out as easily as they used to um, because they're utilizing the base plates from Polaris. So just follow along step by step and it should be a smooth moving process. 
so that was pretty straightforward. Bolted everything together, took off the hardware we needed off the old seat, bolted it onto the new one. Step by step, you can follow through as I did that. It's very easy. You don't need any special tools. 13 mil socket, T27 Torx. And um, yeah, about 30 to 45 minutes, probably a seat, taking your time. Uh, the one thing to remember is you gotta make sure that is engaged in one of the teeth or you're not gonna get it to line up right or sit straight. And um, yeah, pretty much that's about it. It's pretty straightforward. So then now the next step, once we've got the bases attached to the new seats is we are going to put the seats into the machine and then we're gonna set the harnesses up and um, loop the harnesses through the harness holes here. And then um, I'll show you how to bolt the harnesses up on the Razor, very similar on a Can-Am Maverick or, or a Honda Talon or, or any other platform you're gonna be putting these on, Nardicat. Um, so yeah, the only difference might be that the seatbelt bolts are in different locations. The hardware might look a little bit different. Uh, the, the seat brackets might look a little bit different, but 90% of the process is pretty much identical. So I'm gonna pull the machine outside so we have some nice light and uh, then we can go over the seats in details. We can take a good look at them and uh, I can show you what they look like in the machine mounted up and we'll get those harnesses in there and uh, then you can get to the best part which is testing them out and see how comfy they are and see how well they work out on the trail or on the racetrack or wherever you ride. Here you can see the stock seat on the passenger side next to the G-Force off-road seat. The G-Force off-road seat is markedly bigger. However, do keep in mind that the stock seat does not have the seat bracket on the bottom. So it is sitting a few inches lower than it usually would, which is what's making it seem so little. However, the G-Force off-road seats are much wider and much larger seats in general. They do look a lot more visually appealing. As you can see, uh, the color pattern matches really nice. Uh, they have a nice high performance look to them. And they're way more comfortable than the stock seats which I didn't really realize until I had driven in them and then gotten into a friend's razor with stock seats and realized how much of a difference there was. Now I'm quickly slapping the harnesses on here. They're quite straightforward. Basically, you're just gonna mount them to the stock two lower seat belt location since this is a four point harness. You should be able to utilize all of your stock seat belt mounting hardware for this application. Once that's done, you can slap the seat in, then you're gonna fish the harnesses through the seat. You then proceed bolting them down to the stock supplied harness mount locations on the rear of the cage. If you're using the G-Force harnesses, they do not come with mounting hardware, so you will have to acquire some grade eight bolts to mount them with. Then you're basically just gonna set up the harnesses, make sure the same length on each side and you're pretty much good to go. Back here there's a lot of space. The old seats you can see here probably there's a scuff mark. Those old seats used to use every little bit of that space. There's probably three inches at the bottom and I'd say that's almost six inches at the top and you got to remember that the seats do move back a bit which is where the old seats used to move back and hit the back wall here and you can see the rub marks, eh Nathan? Yeah. You can slide these back on the back. More? Yeah, like all the way. No, oh, push them back then. No, like you'd have to, these would have to be loose. You see this, like this is all slotted. Oh, they can go the other way? Yeah, they can go all the way that way. So like with many installs, you don't always get them perfect the first try. So we're going to pull these out and readjust. That's all I get. I don't think I can go all the way. No, because at the back you were... I bet there's two inches or so. I'm gonna go yeah. to the point where I lean up against you that. I'll gotta get undo it. these for... Rib nuts rotating. This rib nuts you, rotating. How tight did you tighten these? Tight? Yeah, the rib nuts are all rotating now. Okay, this one unscrews. This rib nut spins. This one unscrews, and this rib nut spins. So a common issue with rib nuts or inserted threads like that is that the thread portion itself will rotate and you can't unscrew. So what you'll see here is I'll shove a, a long 
file or you can shove a big screwdriver in there and put pressure on the rib nut so it doesn't rotate so that you can undo these bolts. Once you remove the plastic seat bases, you can loosen the bolts in the slider tubes and shift the seat back a little bit until it's in the position that works best for your application. Yeah, look at the shoulders, like one to the other. Yeah, so we adjusted the seat back more on the sliders so that we only got about a half an inch of gap back there now. Looks a lot better, a lot more leg room. Yeah, you can really see it. I guess, yeah, that's a massive difference. I guess that answers this question. We're adjusting this one. Yeah. Want to loosen the harnesses? There we have it. A sweet looking set of G-Force off-road suspension seats in the Razor. These seats really give the Razor an aggressive look. The colors really match. The installation process was quite straightforward with a little bit of fine tuning. We got these things to fit perfectly. The brackets they come with work well. The harnesses bolt up nice and they're a comfortable four point harness system. These seats offer a good bang for buck. They're a affordable price in comparison to some of the competition and the marine grade vinyl should hold up quite well in the long term. I'm quite happy with them and I really like the way they make the Razor look. The most important part is coming up now and that's the test ride. like what you see, then head on over to geforceoffroad.com and check out some of their products for yourselves. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. Also, if you haven't done so already, head on over to our main channel, Adrenaline Junkie Prod, where you can see us trail riding these beasts and putting all these parts to the ultimate test. You can also join us on Instagram and on Facebook to follow along with all the action under our main channel's hashtag, Adrenaline Junkie Prod. Now get out there and ride. See you in the next video.